Hello, welcome to another episode of The Heart of the Matter. Today we are at the CNBC All Africa Business Leaders Awards. Today we will be speaking to some of these business leaders who will be sharing their stories as well as some of the key principles they have imbibed that has been able to distinguish them in this category. Enjoy. about you and your company Sujimoto. Who is Sujimoto? There was a lot of publicity recently about you, so a lot of people will be dying to know who you who are. Sujimoto is. Sujimoto Construction is primarily 80% of our activities based in the luxury real estate. Okay. Um, not forgetting that, also, of course, we want to go with we, our 100% intention is to go into the middle market also. Exactly. But right now we're focusing on we're, luxury. We're in luxury real estate. Okay. And um, you know, it's, it's a new birth, it's a new baby that we're nursing, and um, we believe and we're hoping to be one of the best real estate companies, not, not only in Nigeria but in all of Africa. Okay, yeah. oh, fantastic. The name of your company is Red Media. It's Red Media and Africa. You, African. You have different brands. Yes. So the Future Awards. Um, you also have Why Nigeria, um, which is a magazine. Yes. As well. Why, yeah. Could you tell us about your your company's vision? So, 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 so we're a company that uses media for influence. We, we, we use media to help to, 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 to help people to influence the choices of people and that's what we do so across board with our communication business which is called red communication where we service clients like Guinness like Blackberry like Adani amongst others we help them use media strategies to engage individuals and communities so that their products is the preferred choice so media for influence you know to make them choose with the Future Africa Awards, we find strong, positive images of youth and use them to influence the choices of other young people with directly and through the media. With WineNiger.com, Wine Magazine, you know, we lead the discussion, we set the agenda, analysis, you know, in-depth you know, um, 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 conversation on issues and then shape the way young people are thinking, shape their attitude to different situations. With the TV show on channels, Robin Minds every Sunday as well, we do the same thing. You know, so we own these platforms across board. And of course, there's the, there's the NGO part, which is the Future Africa project, where we focus on entrepreneurship, employability and leadership. I read somewhere that you've mm -hmm. come into the boots of Nigeria. Yes. So what, what are some of the steps you have taken to position the company in that category? Um, to be the boots of Nigeria, that's our unofficial vision. <laughs> our official vision is to be the pharmacy of choice you know, in Nigeria. In other words, everywhere we arrive, we, we become the pharmacy of choice. And um, it's, it's a lot of, retail for me is detail. Retail is detail. We pay a lot of attention to everything that we do, from sourcing um, our merchandise. Uh, we we um, adhere to scrupulous um, supply chain logistics. Um, in, um, also, um, our personnel. We we try to hire the best, you know, in the in, in the industry, pharmacists as well as a lot of support staff. Um, in addition um, to people, continuous learning. I mean, we have a very solid um, core values, and we pay attention not just lip service, but you know, we pay attention to the things that we believe in. So excellence in everything that we do, um, integrity, absolute integrity. I mean, it's tough in, in, in our environment, but um, we insist on absolute integrity, continuous learning, teamwork, um, etc. What do you think about the women that have been nominated in this category as business leaders in Africa? The women? Yes. I mean, um, um, all inspiring, especially in, uh, not necessarily a culture, but a climate where um, women are not expected to lead in the in business, you know, uh, really strange. Considering how many women have actually led in business in the continent over the past few years, there's still a perception, there's still a sense of surprise when a woman is leading and is able to deal as strongly and as effectively as the men. And so, for every time that there is a strong positive image of a woman who's doing well in business, it sends a very strong message across the continent. Mm. So we're here today and CNBC is honoring um, some women. What do you think about these women who have, who have been nominated as business leaders in Africa? You know, it's very funny this question because I, I was almost raised by my mother. And my mother is my biggest inspira inspiration because she's my mentor. My mother was actually sent at the age of 10 years old as a, as a sales girl. She was sent to Cameroon. But today she's one of the 
top five distributors for Nigerian, Nestle Nigerian PLC. Nestle is the second largest um, company after Dangote in the Nigerian stock, stock market. And my mom is one of the top. So you can look at um, the platform where a woman has grown from nothing to everything. So I, I'm, I'm a great supporter of women, especially women that challenge their environment and become an aspire to become leaders of, of society. And I think that they are doing a fantastic job, not only to these women, because it's very easy to honor these kind of women, but also to the young ladies that you locate in the, someone like Maduguri, the people, the young, young ladies, someone that just have two or three kids to feed. How do you encourage these people? How do you make them feel appreciated. So they looking at this kind of women in the society, I think that's a huge, huge step for them. So I really, really appreciate the MCNBC Africa for nominating, most importantly, women that inspire other women. What, what are some of the key factors that you, that would distinguish an individual to be recognized in this type of category? So assuming it was a, a future awards mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. What are the kind of... Well, I think that first and foremost, the kind of success that can be explained, what I mean by that is, mm. you know, people joke that there is a phenomenon in Nigeria called the God of Suddenly, <laughs> where business success cannot be, cannot be pinned down to particular happenings mm. or a particular trajectory of growth. What these kinds of things do is that they force us to recognize those who have gone through a particular process, mm. whose businesses have gone through a normal trajectory of growth organically or based on investment or whatever and the more that our continent recognizes businesses that actually can be explained and celebrated and where other upcoming and new business people can learn actual secrets of success the more we'll be able to multiply wealth across the continent because the problem is when people cannot connect with a story of growth and a story of success and there is nothing for them to learn and nothing for them to be inspired by. Mm -hmm. And so the basic quality for me here would be people whose business stories can be replicated mm -hmm. and thus can inspire others mm -hmm. to do exactly what they've done. That would be the one thing that I would think is most important for this kind of process. Okay. So can you tell us some of the key factors that makes an African business leader? Yeah. Well, I don't think an African business leader is different from any other business leader from perspective. I think, um, you know, you have to have the, what I like to call the bravery to cross uh, the thin line between bravery and stupidity, right? Just to really go after something. I think you have to have a certain level of tenacity um, to, especially here in Nigeria where things could, it would definitely be a lot more challenging. I think it's challenging to run a business anywhere in the world. I think it's especially challenging here in Nigeria. But, um, but I believe that what you really need at the end of the day is an amazing team behind you. Uh, and I feel like that this award is for the 210 people who are who have chosen to follow me on this journey uh, of Paga, um, and and so I think that's the essence of it is really about the team and the ability to work together as a team. Um, I think is the real essence of, of being a leader here. Tell us some of the key factors that makes an African leader, an African business leader. Hmm. An African business leader, tricky question. Um, for someone who's been used to an Africa without opportunities, um, just on the surface, you know, I would say that an African business leader for me is that person who is opening the rough to bring out the diamond of opportunities in Africa. That person who, beyond just doing business on the continent, is concerned about impact. You know, and so Africa can look dark. You know, but there is light and there's so much opportunity. Mm -hmm. So for me, that ultimate African leader is that person who is concerned about African capitalism. So beyond my profit, what happens to the community? What happens to the have-nots? What happens to the young people? What happens to the women? You know, so if you put together that con all of those things, you know, and then you then have competence, you have character, and you have capacity. Yes, it's a tall order. Tell us some of the key factors that has positioned you and your business to be recognized in this capacity. Um, I think it all starts with the vision, you know, the, 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 the vision to want to make a difference in a particular space. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when I left um, university, I could count the number of um, amazing uh, professional pharmacies in one hand. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw the disconnection between, you know, what we studied on campus mm -hmm. as well as, you know, um, compared to reality and therefore I decided that could I make a living um, you know solely focused 
on practicing professionally, ethically in, in the retail pharmacy space. Um, so that was it. Um, I guess I didn't exactly see today, but I wanted to make a difference. You know, could we bring world-class practices into the retail pharmacy space? Um, in addition, is the ability to put a team together. Because at the end of the day, I can't do it alone. Um, in the past 15 and a half years, we've grown to 38 branches. It's a lot of work. Um, and I have the most amazing team, almost 500 wow. in several locations. So um, ability to put the team together, share the vision, and um, inspire, motivate, and achieve our, our goals um, are, are some of the reasons. What are some of the key factors that makes you a business leader in Africa? Well, first, I'm just honored um, to uh, have emerged as the businesswoman of the year. Um, this for the West Africa edition. Uh, my sense is, is really um, showing leadership that's extraordinary. And I say extraordinary because it's leadership that exercises courage. Um, uh, being a game changer, as the ABN group says, uh, where you don't accept the status quo, uh, but also just focusing on excellence, um, uh, making sure that people don't feel that there's a limit. So in uh, the sector that I've been in, uh, as um, the head of the Securities and Action Commission in Nigeria, uh, over the last four and a half years, uh, what we have done, my colleagues and I, is essentially to say that we have to build a world-class capital market. We must make Nigeria uh, the uh, preferred investment destination. Uh, we must be a role model, uh, not just to African countries or countries in the Middle East, but countries around the world that that differentiation that we're an emerging market and there's a developed market, that standards should not have that differentiation. Uh, and so just basically uh, promoting excellence in everything uh, that we do. Watch your favorite Heart of the Matter episodes online at www.theheartofthematter.tv. Also check out exciting behind the scenes photos leave your comments and like us on Facebook. Have you been able to break ground in such a short um, space of time? You're entering a new market and you, you come in strong. Okay, you, you have to understand the fundamentals of Nigeria. Nigeria is one of the most, um, you know, one of the richest countries in the world but um, very few have been able to achieve um, very little in the real estate industry. Um, coming with my background, I grew up in the Western world, I grew up in Paris, I realized that so, um, in, uh, in these kind of countries you, you find buildings that you can compare to gods of buildings, you know? And I'm like, okay, fine, if these people have so little but have achieved so much, how come in our own country we've not been able to achieve a lot? So when you look at success and itself, success it has no racism. Success has no discrimination. If success was dis discrimination, discriminatory, you will find, of course, someone like uh, uh, the color Abiola is richer than the uh, um, Tony Minimalus. But success has no discrimination. Success is about all about understanding the fundamentals of business and following that path. And that's what exactly we've done. We've been able to locate the, fund the, the serious challenges in the real estate industry and we'll just tackle them. It's as simple as that. You know, there's, there's this whole buzz about entrepreneurship, especially within the youth in Nigeria. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Do you think everybody should be an entrepreneur? Well, absolutely not, because <laughs> if we're all entrepreneurs, who's going to work for us? Exactly. Uh, who's going to work with us? Um, I mean, first and foremost, I think that the focus on entrepreneurship is important because, um, as at any count, there are at least 20 million unemployed youth mm -hmm. in Nigeria, for one. Uh, according to the MBS, 54% of our 60 plus million population of young people between 18 and 35 are out of work. Now, enterprise and entrepreneurship is the fastest way to expand the economy, a network of small and medium scale businesses, mm -hmm. increasing, creating value and employing people. So to that extent, we need more people not struggling for the few jobs available, but creating more jobs. That being said, not everyone is made to be an entrepreneur. And by that, I don't mean fail, because failure is a part of a success, it's a part of the story of an entrepreneur. Exactly. But then I mean people who will not, who are not made for business and who would rather be adding value, who would rather create more value, adding value to already existing processes. We need to begin to evolve a national system that helps people know where they fit most. 
is your are you to create or are you to support are you to create or are you to improve are you to create or are you to enlarge you know uh, when people are able to find their spaces the economy will be better for it given that you're in technology mobile payments yes. and we have um, infrastructural challenges yes. um, especially with technology how have you been able to cope as a business yeah. so what we've seen over the last few years is improvement in access to technology um, internet is becoming more readily available to people so our consumers and our agents um, are able to access our service more easily um, but in terms of our infrastructure that we're laying out we've had to do things that in other markets we would not do so for example we have connectivity to all the telcos to make sure that when we send you an sms it actually gets delivered to you um, and those are things that you wouldn't have to do or worry about in other markets so there's a lot that we do behind the scenes to make sure the platform the paga platform is always up and running and it's uh, efficient because from the customer perspective you don't want to see all the things in the background we're doing you just want to know that it works um, and so there's a lot of people who are doing a lot of hard work to make sure that that is always always the case given that you're an African business leader in retail pharmaceutical mm -hmm. and there's concerns about the quality of products and quality of drugs mm -hmm. coming from some of these companies mm -hmm. how have you been able to gain and also maintain the trust of your clients over the long period of time that yes. you've been in business um, it's interesting because um, there's a story that was said that a, a certain wife um, asked the husband to get um, some medication for him and he was in a certain store and um, he called the wife to say they don't have it and the wife said where are you and he said where he was and the wife said I said you should go to Health Plus you know so um, um, it's, it's amazing every week I meet people that I don't know and they tell me they're card carrying um, um, loyalty member of Health Plus um, I, and I really the, the critical thing is a determination from the very get-go that we will source scrupulously and therefore we buy from manufacturers directly if you buy from a manufacturer you can hardly go wrong we also buy from the importers or the manufacturers representatives in Nigeria and where um, we have to buy from wholesalers we insist on buying from pharmacists owned wholesalers um, so if, if you do it's simple when people talk about fake drugs in Nigeria substandard drugs in Nigeria I ask myself how can it be if you are sourcing from a manufacturer a manufacturer's representative or you know a little proportion that we have to from a pharmacist owned wholesaler that's critical okay. so so those are um, it, it's simple and um, we adhere we, we make sure that we police our supply chain it, it's really that simple so I sleep well at night with this award, what's next? Yeah. What's, what's um, next for PAGA for the next yeah. five years? You've done five years, five years. Where do you see yourself? So currently, we have, uh, we're just about to hit the 2 million user mark uh, on PAGA. We have over 520,000 active users um, every, every 90 days on the, on the platform. Um, we've processed over 10 million transactions worth about 116 billion Naira. Um, really, what we're excited to see that 15 minutes, everyone's do, one person is doing a transaction. I mean, every, every minute, 15 people are doing a transaction. Mm -hmm. Where we wanted to go is um, a place where literally you're thinking about paying anyone, whether you're paying them into their bank accounts or paying to their phone number to go and pick the cash at a PAGA agent or an ATM without a card. All you think about is just paga it. Or whether you want to shop online, whether it's Jumia, Deal Day, you know, you can go online and shop Tripican to buy your movie tickets. Um, you can just use paga and you don't need to bring out your debit card, you don't need to worry about anything. Um, so where we're going is to make paga the number one way to pay and get paid in Nigeria. What role do you see Nigeria and Africa playing in the in global financial markets? And especially in Nigeria, what, what are some of the steps you're taking to position Nigeria as a global leader? Well, first and foremost, um, as I mentioned, Nigeria is a role model uh, in the regulation uh, of capital markets. Uh, we sit on the board of the International Organization of Securities Commission. Uh, we support other countries in building the same kinds of systems that we've built uh, in terms of our regulation. Uh, we recognize that as a country, that has the largest economy uh, in Africa, uh, that we must make sure that people understand that capital markets count. Uh, we believe that um, it's very, very important for people to understand the value of capital markets to transforming society. Um, if you're not saving, uh, if you're not creating wealth, if you're not distributing wealth, uh, then you have some of the challenges that we face uh, in the world, whether it be security challenges, whether it be issues of social cohesion. So we feel um, that what we do in regulating the capital markets helps build 
first class businesses, helps Africa address its infrastructure challenges, helps us create an environment where citizens feel that they're economically included uh, into the economy of their country. So it's, it's, it's very encompassing uh, in terms of the impact uh, of a capital market. And we in Nigeria want to be the role model for that capital market that transforms society. What advice would you give young aspiring entrepreneurs who would one day want to, to win an award like you have won or on your platform future awards? What would you tell what would you advise them to do to be able to um, qualify? So 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 it, it's a lot of things, you know, uh, and, but for me I followed my passion. You know, and so because I followed my passion, it's made things a bit easier. You know, but above all is the fact that I say to people I don't run a race, I run on grace. And so, in the foundation of everything we do is God, mm. you know, and so with God and understanding the principles that it's not a God that you are lazy and you expect a miracle. Mm. It's a God that expects you to use your passion to the fullest. Mm. It's a God that expects you not to sleep, you know, <clears throat> to stay awake and do the work and deliver to your client and keep to your promise. You know, mm. it's a God that wants you to be honest. It's a God that wants you to be compassionate, mm. to think about, uh, about other people before you do yeah. things. You know, it's a God that wants you to be smart, to be creative, to push yourself, mm. to read that book, take that exam. You know, all of those things that we shy away from as human beings. We want to cut corners, we want quick money, we want to wake up one money and become rich, we are focused on vanity. You know, all of those things. For young Africans, you need to shut your eyes away from them. Pick a passion, pick a goal, pick a spot and start digging. And after a while, we've been doing this now for nine years. You know, and I've been doing this, you know, as a, I mean, I, I started working when I was 14, you know, and it's 14 years on now, I'm 28 now. You know, my partner is 29, you know, so we've been doing this now for 14, 15 years on our own. We picked the spot, we kept digging, you know, and along the line, we built so much influence to the glory of God. You know, we built so many accolades, including this one tonight. You know, so it's, it, we, we are that typical young boy come from Sioux you know, regular place in the country, you know, I mean, I, I didn't do, I, I wasn't born in the Koi, you know, come from regular place, but work your way through, work your way through that pyramid, and then when you get to the top, or at least when you get out of the, the crowded areas, we begin to look back and pull other people up. And that's what we do. You're a professional who has mm -hmm. become an entrepreneur, who has gone into business. Mm -hmm. What would you advise any um, professional who wants to be an entrepreneur, who is mm -hmm. an aspiring entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. what, what is one thing you would tell them? One thing? Um, I guess you have to, you know, the main thing is to get business skills. For me, I always say that in every profession, there's a body of knowledge. There's an A to Z to a particular body of knowledge. And if you're an entrepreneur, then you have to understand entrepreneurship, so business skills. And I was chipping focus. focus. Very and important. Mentorship. <laughs> and mentorship. And networking. And networking. <laughs> so on a final note, what advice would you give an aspiring entrepreneur, yeah. especially an e-commerce, who wants to come, yeah. come strong? So what I would advise people is that Nigerians, we love to talk. So don't talk too much, right? Really focus on doing what's going to move you forward and get to the next step. I'll also say don't spend too much time on the business plan. The business plan's good. It helps you think about the details, but take the next step um, and only do something that you're passionate about. If you're not passionate about the problem you're trying to solve, and you have to be solving a problem, um, if you're not passionate about the problem you're trying to solve, you're not going to make it through the hard times. And there will be the hard times. One of the roles I play is a financial coach. Yes. And I find that a lot of people are a bit wary to invest in the capital market, especially because they lost a lot of money during yes. the market crash. What, what would you advise people to restore their confidence in, in investing in the capital market? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, um, your first line of defense is your knowledge. So my advice to the average person uh, is to make sure that they're learning about the different options that are available to them. And when you've had a bad experience, the, um, your next step should not be that you don't try to do things. You learn from the past experience. So, so first and foremost, it starts with you. The second thing uh, is really to look at the track record um, for that particular environment. In our case in Nigeria, uh, this is uh, a market where market integrity is priority, um, supporting the ordinary investor is our second priority uh, and therefore you can come to the regulator uh, and be sure that that regulator will support you uh, uh, if you've had any wrongdoing.
Uh, so, right, so, so, but the first step is really to learn and understand what the options are uh, for you to invest. You cannot say that you wouldn't save. You can have something go wrong, you can have a rainy day, um, you can save for your education in the future, you can save for your pension when you're not able to work. Yes, so there's, there's, so there's a lot uh, that you can do. And if you say that you won't save, you'll not be able to improve your future uh, because it's through savings that you're able to improve your future and invest in those savings, of course.